What's up guys? Mike Sharp is here. He is back after a four month hiatus. I just talked about myself in the third person. That is super weird. Um, I have been doing a merger with my private business and it has taken all my time and we have finally got that process happening and now we're just, we're past the merge date and we're just uh, doing the uh, integration of both systems, which I'm less involved in. So I have a bit more time to do videos now. You can see also my hair has got longer. Uh, I have not cut it in quite a long time. I have not had time to do anything. So I do appreciate the people who've reached out and said, hey, you know, how's it going? You know, uh, we'd like to see videos. So I do appreciate that, guys. And I promise I will get a Stone Co. video out real soon. But Baba, this is this one's about Baba. I wanted to do a pretty simple one on Baba. I was looking at their results uh, recently and... I might have some reasons why I think the stock would go up uh, this year. So this might be this might be the year for some movement. It looks like it might have started already, but I will save those till later. Um, and I will go through the most recent quarter results a little bit first. So last year I put out a video that says we have liftoff in BABA, a little bit premature, um, but I do think that the bottom is in, it was in back then, and we have seen a real stabilizing of the business and some uh, green shoots of growth in uh, China commerce, you know, they're still not big, uh, but we're starting to see, you know, I think we've seen the troughing and we're actually coming out of the, coming out of this. Uh, now, Baba is a huge ocean liner. It takes a long time to turn something like this around, but I do think that they are, uh, they're in the process of doing that and, uh, looks to be working and we might get some momentum soon. So uh, in terms of results, uh, I think the big one here is, you know, not the big one, but the, the obvious one is the buyback. The buyback is what was 5% net after all the, um, the share issuance, the, um, the, the uh, share based comp issuance this year. So that's a really high buyback rate. Um, they also issued a special dividend and that uh, they look to be running at about 3% dividend. Uh, so that's 8% capital return to shareholders. That is a good start. Um, and then if we start looking at the, the segments, I, you know, it's starting to look a lot better here. You know, they said that they have um, uh, gross merchandise volume up double digits in China commerce. That is a really good sign. Now it's not translating to revenue yet. And that might be due to, you know, the competitive, uh, nature of the the um, the space uh, and PDD is really um, pressing them on that, but you know that's that's a good sign. Uh, they're actually able. They're starting to grow. Some of the things that they're doing are leading to more more um, more merchandise being being moved. So that's a that's a good sign. If it does translate to revenue, you know we might get uh, we might get some positive outcomes here. Now, but Taobao and Tmall still pretty. Uh, pretty slow growth, 5% year over year. Um, the big wins are obviously, I mean, you guys have looked at the numbers. It's its pretty obvious that the international commerce and the logistics uh, portions of the business up 46% year over year and 28%. Those are growing really fast. And now they are almost 50% like together the size of the China commerce segment. So it's not so much, it's not as top heavy as it used to be. Um, and I think if they continue in that direction, you might have a multi-arm business that actually has multiple cash flow um, uh, segments to it. Right now, they're still in growth mode. They're not, uh, you know, not producing much, uh, much in terms of cash flow. Actually, negative right now. Uh, cloud is is uh, you know positive EBITDA, but still not not significantly yet. Uh, the the financials, you know, this is a pretty normal quarter. There's nothing too um, too outrageous here, nothing too phenomenal. But they they still continue to print cash. This is a cash cow. This business, and you know, for all the crap that this company takes, it's still a world class business, and it still has a massive footprint. In fact, the largest e-com business in the world, and. Are they still largest? Oh, I actually don't know that. Maybe maybe Amazon uh, overtook them at some point, and I didn't know. But anyway, they're massive, and they're um, you know huge amount of cash flow, twenty one point eight uh, million billion in non cap uh, non gap net net income for the year. Uh, and the reason why, if you don't know, the reason why we're not going to use gap 
uh, income here is because you know some of the investments they hold the fluctuation in the price of those investments uh the public price they have to include that in the income statement which is, is ridiculous uh so let's use the non-gap number and um yeah, basically it's a textbook value play right now. I mean, they're producing 21, almost 22 billion in net income. The, uh, as I'm recording this, it's just over 200 billion in market cap. So you've got about a 10% earnings yield or a 10 PE, which is pretty cheap for a company that is growing at 8% a year. I should have mentioned that the revenue grew 8% year over year. That's actually good. That's much better than the, than, than 20, uh, not 2022, fiscal 23, um, It's that's why I'm saying the bottom is in. I think that was the bottom and we're coming out of it now. They've re rearranged the business, they're back in, they're back focused um, and they have, uh, you know, a revitalized business it looks like. Um, what else here? So if we look at, if we take the huge amount of cash uh, they have off the market cap, that's gonna put them and the EBITDA is like just over 26 billion. That's gonna put them at about a five times EV to EBITDA uh, ratio, which is very low. Now this is a stupid metric, right? I mean, nobody likes EBITDA, but you know, other people are looking at it. We have to be aware of what other people are looking at and how, and how they may judge uh, the company as well. Well, maybe we don't, um, but looking at that, you've got a five times and then you've got a 10 times PE ratio. So, um, this is, you know, it's not bad, right? It's it, it it's cheap, and they're returning cash to to um, shareholders, which is, you know, this is a traditional value play. I don't think there's any huge growth on the way, but I think that they could accelerate from here slightly and might maybe get, you know, into the uh, double double digits at some point soon. Okay, so let's talk about the let's talk about the reasons why I think the stock might go up now. We're not supposed to talk about stocks. We're supposed to talk about businesses. Alibaba is a phenomenal business. What happens if you own the whole business? Let's look at that from, from that angle. Yeah, that's right. When you're investing, you're supposed to do that. But we all like it when the stock goes up. And we have been enduring a very painful um, downdraft in this business for the last three years. And I think there's two reasons why we might get uh, some movement this year in the stock price. The first one you're not gonna like, and the second one I think you will like. So first let's let's talk about the one you'll hate first, which is the technical reasons. Uh, if you look at the Hang Seng Index, this is sort of the uh, the main index that I look to sort of track the, Chi the Chinese market. Uh, there's also the Shanghai, but that one's a little bit murkier. So I look at the Hang Seng. Look, if you see here, the Hang Seng has broken ich, this three year downtrend that, it has been in, and I think probably a lot of us watching have in, in experienced this, and it, it has been long. It finally broke that trend line, and there are a lot of people, regardless of what you think about technical analysis, there are a lot of people who are seeing this. There's a lot of algorithms that have seen this, and this is, I think that's the reason you've seen this massive move uh, over the last, what, two weeks? Um, from, yeah, like late April, through to mid-May, so about a month, I guess. It's just gone straight up, and that is all the trading money coming into the system. And the guy I was talking to, he was saying, well, it's 80% of the market is run by algorithms, right? And so this is, don't, don't make the mistake of thinking the market is value investors. It's not. We are a tiny, tiny portion of the market, and we do not move the market. The bots move the market. The bots have seen this, and they're buying. Um, as well, another technical reason. So Alibaba, there was a resistance point at $78. Resistance means the stock price comes and hits that and gets rejected, rejected. Once, once those resistance points break, a lot of the time you get a move in that direction. And so what I have done is um, my trading system. So as you might remember that my, uh, my system is I have 80% of my portfolio that's basically just investments, long-term investments, just leave them. And then I have 20% of my portfolio that I just mess around with because I like trading. I think it's interesting. It keeps me, keeps my hands off the 80% of the 80% of the portfolio. So I'm going to pull up this Baba chart here. It's hit its head on this 80 level and broke out on 
uh, May 2nd. That's a big breakout. That means that the resistance level is no longer holding. And then my trading systems, once something breaks, it comes back and tests that same breakout level and then resumes up, then I, then I buy. So on what day? The May 9th, Thursday, May 9th, I doubled my BABA position. Um, and if I'll catch you up here, I had a pretty big position. Last year, I cut it in half. I put half of it in PDD, which turned out to be a good move. Um, so basically, I'm back to where I was temporarily. Now, if the price drops below that $78 level, I'll, I'll get rid of the, the second half. Uh, but for now, it looks good. Um, I'm recording this at 88.54. Um, <clears throat> so that's my trading system. I've doubled my position because I think the the Hang Seng is, is the, it's like the S&P. If the S&P goes up, everything else goes up, right? You don't have to be a genius to make money in a, in a, in a bull market. And I think the Hang Seng's turned and now, now in a bull market, Chinese stocks are actually good. And we might see all the U.S. investment banks and the, the analysts go, let's buy China, right? You might start seeing that soon. So that's what I'm waiting for. If we get that, you'll get another um, move in the up direction. Now, this is a good time to remind you, this is not investment advice. This is what I'm doing. I don't know nothing about your situation. If you make a move, don't blame me. That's your decision. This is what I'm doing, <laughs> okay? Um, so that's... Reason number one, the technical reason looks really strong right now. I see some strong tailwinds there. The second reason is maybe the better one. So cloud is terrible. Everyone hates cloud. 3% growth year over year. What a disaster. Maybe not. Okay, so cloud, they cut their prices to sort of increase uh, the number of customers using it, increase the, what do they call it, efficiency or... Uh, anyway, the, the value that people are getting from using their product. So that 3% growth is with lower pricing, which means the volume of customers is actually higher than that. So underneath the surface, I think the actual customer base is growing pretty strongly, right? Keep in mind that's, that's on lower revenue per customer. So that's, that's good. But the big thing here is they said they expect double digit growth in cloud in the second half of fiscal 2025, which is, what's that? That's September through end of March. No, October through end of March um, this year and next year. <clears throat> so if we see a double digit growth, if they start getting there and like next, next, let's say next quarter, we see 6% growth. And then after that, we see nine and then we see 11. The way the market works is that they don't care about the absolute number. It's all about the rate of change or the rate of change of the rate of change. I think the delta of the delta. Tell me if I'm wrong here. But basically, if something's expanding, the growth rate's expanding, that's great. It doesn't really matter that it's 6%, 9%. It's that it's growing. And what the investment community does is they extrapolate, extrapolate those growth rates into infinity. So if they see three, six, eight, 12, they'll go, oh, in two years, it'll be 25%. Oh, look at all my models changed. And this thing's worth a trillion dollars now, right? <clears throat> I'm not saying that's the, that's the calculation, but that's sort of the mentality, right? And so these, um, what we need with Baba is some momentum here. And I think if we get that, that will be the trigger for people to go, oh, look, it, the, the cloud thing is real, right? This is the Amazon. Well, it's not really the Amazon, but you know, they'll, they'll make that connection. Most people do that, make that connection. And, they'll, and in the U S we all know that the cloud providers make tons and tons of money. Um, so that narrative might come back. And I do think that that gives us a catalyst. Now we've got a catalyst, we've got a date and it's not just, let's just wait and see if they can turn the ship around. It's like, they had given us a date and a number and, you know, <clears throat> let's see if it materializes. Cause if it does stocks going up, I think. Um, now the, 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 here's the bonus thing that might propel a stock. Now this one doesn't have a time frame on it, but I, I, I alluded to it or I mentioned it before that if international commerce and the logistics segment, if one of those starts 
printing cash, if they actually get to a level where, you know, they, they get over the hump and start and, and you start seeing the margins expand and they start, start contributing to like, to the bottom line in, you know, in a meaningful and growing way that will also put fuel behind, behind the business. But we don't have a, we don't have a, a time frame on that, but I think that's coming. Um, and if I was going to bet on it, I would think it might be logistics first, actually, because international commerce, there's some, you know, there's some pretty big competitors out there that are running at losses and sort of making it more difficult. But I, you know, I, I don't really have any, uh, anything valuable to add there, but I, I do think one of those will eventually make money. And I think that's going to be huge for the stock as long as China commerce doesn't collapse. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it there, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. And, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you got to this, this, uh, this spot, please hit like, and, uh, I, I will see you real soon in the next video. Thanks.